Nation, good evening and welcome to If I Ruled the World, the show where our teams play at being politicians and anybody who attempts to cheat, lie or bribe will automatically be declared the winner. Uh, joining Jeremy Hardy on the red team this evening is Tony Hawkes and joining Graham Garden on the blues, Maria McCurlane. I should point out there's no political significance to the colours of the two sides. The parties on this programme are more or less interchangeable, as indeed they are in the House of Commons at the moment. <laughs> Let's go on to game one, which is called Soapbox, and it's just an opportunity for the, uh, the various contestants here to set before you their policies on a matter of topical interest. Well, this is always topical, actually. It's law and order. Now, what do you have to say about law and order, Jeremy? Yes, one of the things we're looking at doing is, is trying to establish the link between poverty and crime. In order to do this, we... We're trying to get people off of benefit and into crime. <laughs> Tony Hawkes, so do you support your party or have got different policies? Well, no, I support the party, obviously. We're very, very concerned in the Red Party about the rising crime rate. One only has to look at Crime Watch to see how serious it is. I, I was watching this the other day. I, I've noticed a large proportion of the crimes in this country are committed by male Caucasians between the ages of 18 and 30. Mm. Well, why do we let these Caucasians into the country? <laughs> We don't go over to Caucasia and rob their buildings. No. <laughs> no, so well, we've got to stamp down on that. All right, well, that's, that's seems to away. carry the crowd there, but uh, Graham Garden of the Blue Party, where do you sign up? Well, we take order? a different approach. I mean, when it comes to law and order, I think we can all learn a great deal from the humble taxi driver. <laughs> and our new policy development unit, in fact, consists of a master of foxhounds and a cabbie called Reg. <laughs> And they've come up with several new policies for us, not least uh, the reintroduction of capital punishment in schools. Mm. <laughs> well, have you got a, a view to support your blue Yes, captain? I have, because um, uh, an alarming number of um, independent inquiries have revealed that there are a lot of innocent people in prison, so we plan to put a stop to independent inquiries. And um, <laughs> we also think it would be a very good idea for police officers to visit schools so they can learn to read. Can I just say yes, that you we, can. We yes, have, you're uh, interrupting already. That's we good. have. Uh, well, if you will, let me finish. We have. Um, <laughs> we have appointed a drug czar and also an alco pop sultan and <laughs> joyriding kaiser. Uh, but if I could just say that there are many things which harass people today in the street, not just squeegee merchants and the so-called homeless and, and beggars. What is so-called homeless? What, why do you say so-called homeless? Well, that's, that's what people call them, clearly. <laughs> I would, <laughs> they call that and we say so. I mean, in my, in my, view, in my view, these people have a home and yeah. clearly their home is outside. Yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We have uh, made some progress. In my own constituency, the crime figures have actually come down. And they've come down by six and seven eighths. And now, that's not just a number I've pulled out of a hat. No. <laughs> I see. But we still have our priorities. Uh, first of all, we must, uh, I think, decriminalise the police. <laughs> all right, well, uh, well, if I could just uh, come in here for a moment, yeah. I think, you think it's very important you get the punishment right. Uh, I think a lot of people want to bring back birching. Uh, for young thugs. Frankly, I think if you're going to have this principle, let's have the same principle right across the board, so all offenders would get hit, but minor offenders just get hit with something that doesn't hurt very much. Right. So if you're a parking offender, you just get flicked with a tea towel. <laughs> and non-payment of council tax, you get led to your bedroom by your ear. Yeah. Uh, no TV licence, you get a Chinese burn. <laughs> and if you're caught cycling without lights, you have to go and have a cup of tea with a magistrate, and you just sit there and you're chatting away, and suddenly he takes his spoon out of his tea and he puts it on your arm, like that. <laughs> and if that doesn't sort you out, Clive, nothing will. Yes. <laughs> OK, now, at the end of the programme, we're going to have an election, but before we get there, we'd like to do an opinion poll along the way to see how the uh, parties are doing so far. Uh, so everybody in the studio audience here has got a special device that they can vote with. You can vote either for the Red Party or the Blue Party. So it's just for the studio audience. Don't do this at home because you'll start tuning into Channel 5 or something like that. So uh, away you go. So if you think the Red Party is the party you'd vote for at the moment, uh, vote Red. And if you're the Blue Party, vote Blue. <laughs> And there we are. I see that the Red Party's at 67 to 33. So well done, the Reds. <laughs> well done. So, um, are you feeling uh, despondent, down on the mouth, defeated, well, uh, retiring, uh, abject? I think we've got them running scared. <laughs> but they're way ahead of you. Well, they're running faster than us. <laughs> um, 
We're now going to do a round called the yes-no round, which explores the fact that politicians never answer a question with a straight yes, a straight no, or straight anything. Should any of the politicians here answer or use the word yes or no at any point, we'll hear this noise, and they'll be disqualified from the round. Jeremy, let's start with you. The Millennium Dome, do you think it's a good idea? Well, what we're looking at... No, don't, I don't want a speech. Are you in favour of it or not? Well, a cube clearly would be something easier to stack because this is something that will only be used temporarily. <laughs> so the shape, is, the shape is still very much in development. But it's, uh, it's supposed to be a, a, a dome shape. Do you think people are going to visit it? Well, those are your words and not mine, Clive. <laughs> well, uh, what... <laughs> <laughs> would... Uh, will you be going? What are you... Here you go. You're, you're, you're knocking Britain. This is an extraordinary... <laughs> This is an extraordinary achievement that the British people have, have made. Yeah. So you're in favour as well, are you, Tony? The consultation documents that we have looked at so far <laughs> yeah. suggest that it is a very, very advisable idea for people so to do, and I would not be would against it be, going along. Will it be built on time? The timing of this is very important, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Because <laughs> we really want to highlight it's no good it being finished in 2010, it's too late. Did you say yes? I don't it's think no so. good. Yes, you said no good. You said it's no good. Oh, well, well spotted. <laughs> uh, oh, a, a controversial decision, but uh, uh, well, Grant, I think do, the do, polls. Do, wait a minute. I uh, think yeah, the no, polls. No, you, you're out. The polls you're will out. reflect the sympathy is, vote later. God, you this, see. Is, <laughs> this is. You sound like Margaret Thatcher. Oh, I'm coming back. Oh, I am coming yeah. back. Right. Uh, so then, uh, Graham, uh, Sean Connery, should he have been given a knighthood? There are many options open to us here on this one, and we shall be considering them all in due course. Yes, but do you think he deserves a knighthood? Well, he's a Scotsman, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> was, um, was he the best James Bond? By far and away, he was one of the best four that I ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you say the best film that he ever made was the first one, which was called Doctor... <laughs> Which is the film I'm thinking of? Daughter N O. <laughs> and what, is, what does that spell? That spells Drenon. <laughs> uh, Maria, do you do you support the MCC refusing to admit women members? Well, I've spoken to a lot of people, Clive, ordinary people. I've travelled the length and breadth of the chocolate counter at the Harrods Food Hall. Yeah. <laughs> and what has become clear to me is that the Belgian chocolates with fresh cream are by far and away the most popular. Yeah. What we the really MCC, should be do you, looking at... Do you think at, women should join the MCC? I, I can't give you a soundbite answer, Clive. If you want me to answer the question, then I will. I do. Do you know what the MCC is? I think is? we should be looking at... Do you know what the yes, MCC it's is? The yes, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, Jeremy, uh, are you in favour of cricket? Well, all of these things, all of these things are Do up you play for cricket? Review. Clearly, this is a multicultural society. Do you play cricket? <laughs> Personally, I, I went to a, I went to a, a rugger school. Yeah. Um, Can you play cricket? Well, of, of course. I mean, if, if you were to ask me a straightforward question, I could give you an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain the LBW rule? Well, these are, these are clearly initials. Um, <laughs> What about schoolgirl boxing? Do you think it's right that schoolgirls should box? Ah, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your game? Well, uh, I, I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> Are you in favour of being allowed to be a sport? Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a resignation rather than a ruling. I do. So, so you're out, you're right. And Graham Garden is clearly the winner of that round. Well done, Graham Garden.